again. I feel like so good and grateful to be and uh, enjoying the sleep of this morning. But no doubt they'll join us uh, as we go forward. Hey, we're going to jump straight away. Jump to your feet.
to bring our eyes back to what makes us fail. Lord God, it's you. It's your beauty. It's, it's just the wonder of who you are. What a joy for us to, to know you, to have your praise overflow from our lips, to give you the honor and praise that you so richly deserve. God, we pray that you'd be honored in our interactions with each other and our hearts towards you this morning as we go and live lives that reflect that you are our King, that your way is the way, that you are life itself. God, we bless you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Hey, it's just so great to be together. Uh, it's, uh, it's Mother's Day. It's not just another Sunday. It's uh, not that, that, that uh, that's less than Mother's Day, but it is Mother's Day. So before I dig myself a bigger hole, I'll just say that. It's Mother's Day. And whether you are in the room or joining us online, it is just awesome to have you with us. Obviously, you may have noticed for the last two and a bit years we've been in a pandemic here in New Zealand. And so um, we just really encourage you, firstly, um, I think the biggest trick of this season is to kind of just shrink your world down to the size of your house. So I uh, really encourage you, if you look around, if you've been attending and there's people that you haven't been seeing, please be mindful of others. Like, what are, are people actually resting with sickness? Is there stuff going on? Let's reach out and make sure we are the family of God to each other. I know that there's families that have just come out. I know there's families that are in right now uh, and part of our congregation who are resting with this virus. It's not fun. I've had it. It's not really exciting. Uh, but as we move into this increasingly kind of hopefully post-pandemic phase, just really encourage uh, all of us just to be keep our eye out for others. Same when we're gathering here, whether you're in here and for whatever reason you aren't able to wear a mask or whether you are able to do that. But I'm just, it's just so good to be together. And uh, really encourage us just to enjoy that, um, to make ourselves at home and, uh, and to enjoy the space. If you... The caveat to that, it's great to be together, but if you are unwell, please watch online. Uh, we love to share openly, generously, but let's not share our bugs with each other. Um, let's make sure we uh, have a very uh, spiritual time at home when we're doing that. But uh, it's great to have you with us. So just uh, um, Jamie and Becca, they might be watching us online. Pastor Jamie and Becca having a weekend away. Hey guys, come in. Clean their seats right up the front. No. I know people love that. Awesome. It's great to. Um, what did I say? Oh yeah, Pastor Jamie and Becky having a weekend away, and so pray for them. They've been. Uh, they had had planned this weekend away, and then they got COVID about a couple of months ago. So it's great that they've been able to get away and uh, enjoy some time out. Uh, we're really privileged today to have some uh, some of our incredible pastors from Tamuka. Some of you may remember them. <laughs> from the oh, no. from the brief time they had in Timaru with us, I think about 13 years uh, before they took on the pastor of Tamuka um, last year. But we uh, have. I'm going to invite my uh, fellow blues brother to the stage. I don't know if what, what all you other guys were thinking this morning, but clearly you didn't get the memo. <laughs> Brown shoes. Navy pants, navy jacket, white shirt. Honestly, if you guys haven't had the Connect Uniform memo yet, uh, we're sorry. Make sure we've got your right email address so that uh, you can be like us next time. But I just thought it would be really awesome for us just to pray for mums this morning. Whether they are whether in the room, whether um, enjoying their breakfast in bed, watching us online, whatever. I just thought I'd ask our Pastor Steve to pray for us. Father, we uh, thank you on this special day uh, to celebrate mums. Um, Father, we remember them because there's no one like them. Father, they, <laughs> they put others first before themselves. Father, they give out uh, to the extent that uh, at times uh, there's nothing, nothing left within them. Um, they love like almost like no one else can love. Father, there's a tenderness yet a courageousness, Lord, that exists within them, Father, that um, nourishes and protects um, their young ones, their children. And Lord, it's a joy to behold. And so we lift them up before you this morning. And Lord, Father, for these ones, these mums who give out so much, Father, we ask, would you bless them? 
Father, would you uh, replenish them at this time? Lord, as they've given out so much, I thank you for your word that says that, you know, those that refresh others will themselves be refreshed. And so we pray for that refreshing this morning, that it would be theirs. Lord, that they would know, Father, your favor upon them. Lord, they would know an honoring, Lord, at this time. Father, that they would be celebrated and they would know that. Lord, my God, for whatever they need this morning, Lord, we pray, Father, that uh, because of your faithfulness and your goodness and your mercy, Father, that they would know you surrounding them and keeping them on this day. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for their great love. Lord, they're an example to us all of how to love, Lord, regardless of anything around us. So bless them richly and mightily on this day. Amen. Amen. Thanks very much, Steve. Um, we take time to acknowledge these things because really, you know, when we're thinking about Mother's Day and Father's Day, we're really we're celebrating the image of God in those roles, the way that actually these roles reflect that. And for some of us, maybe we've had that experience, so it's been really positive, but we also acknowledge on days like today that not everyone's experience has been positive. And for some people today, it may be the first or second Mother's Day that you've had without your mum. Maybe they've passed, and we're a community that doesn't just celebrate together, but we grieve together as well. And so we just need to acknowledge that today. That for some people it's going to be um, not necessarily the happiest of days, but we acknowledge that um, the image of God expressed in mums when it's done at its best. Amen? Yeah. Important to do that. Hey, um, our exit's uh, just there and out that way if you need them. Uh, and for those of you who haven't been here before, the loos are just uh, through that door and down the hallway. Great, what else do I need to do? Hey, if you're new with us, it's great to have you here. And uh, we'd love to connect with you. Hopefully um, you've already had a chat with someone on your way in. But if you are looking for a church home, perhaps you're new to town, whatever, we would love to hook you up with a connect card, um, which just gives us the ability to get you in detail so that we can um, connect with you ongoing, not just today, but just see if there's anything we can do to serve you or if there's any information that you would like about um, Connect Church. We're in a bit of an interesting space at the moment, uh, doing our multiple services in here, but we would uh, love to let you know what's happening and uh, how we're moving forward. We do have plans with the council at the moment, so pray for as we try and get these plans through for the conversion of next door so we can get back to um, our plans that we hope to be well advanced in already, but um, COVID is no respecter of persons and is uh, kind of spoiled our plans yet again, but um, we're so grateful we have this space anyway, but continue to keep that. Uh, in your prayers, and we will be bringing you some more information once we get that through council, what our next steps are, and really encourage you, if you feel to hold on to your tax return credits from your giving, that would be awesome too, because we may have a use for those, if you felt uh, that way inclined to so into the next stage uh, of our building project. But without further ado, before I suck up all of the air on Mother's Day, uh, I would like to invite one of the spiritual mums of our church family, Pastor Rachel Little, come and share the message with us. Why don't you give a hand? Thank you. Hi, everyone. I think I actually know most people here. Um, so it's lovely to be home. And although we have two homes now, so... <laughs> yeah, um, and I just really love also... Um, just how God goes before us. Um, I've obviously just got um, a date from Dawn. Would you like to come in? I said, I'd love to come. Um, and then the songs that Maddie's actually pre-chosen actually fit so much with our, my message. And we haven't connected, haven't really talked. And um, I just love how God goes before us. And, and that is to do with his spirit. So I'm talking about um, God's spirit this morning and how we can connect with him and why we need to connect with him. So... Um, yeah, I just will do a quick review. Um, most, some of you would have been here last week for Mike's um, intro to the Scent series. So I'm just going to review that quickly, just so that we're on the same page and that sets where I'm, um, for where I'm carrying on through. So um, if you want to bring up the first scripture, that would be great, John 20, 19 to 23. Great, so we can see that. So on the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of Jewish leaders... Um, this is after Jesus had died um, and a couple of people had seen him. Um, he came in and stood among the disciples and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed his hands and side, his wounds, 
The disciples were overjoyed and saw that it was really him. Um, again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. I talked a little bit, I thought about this during the week actually, peace be with you, that's quite a common, um, it's like we say hello, um, often in the Middle Eastern areas uh, they say peace be with you and the words probably would have been like shalom, um, which is peace, um, and they would have had a tumultuous time, their Lord had just died, um, they heard that he had resurrected, they were confused, and then he just walks in the door and just says, have peace, just be peaceful, I've got this in hand. Um, but then he throws them right in the deep end. He says, as the Father has sent me, I'm going to send you. So they're struggling. This guy's just turned up. This kind of apparition, is this for real? And then he goes, I'm, as God has sent me to you, to the earth, now I'm sending you. So he's straight in. It's like, no sympathy, let's have some hugs, let's sit down and talk about what's happened. Yeah, and he's going, he's going right in. So I thought, well, what does that mean uh, for Jesus to send us? What is, what is he saying? I, I'm sending you. So we're going to be unpacking that over the next few weeks in various aspects. And Mike talked with us about what does it look like for the church to be faithful as a sent people? And what's our part in that? And what's our investment in that? And sent is actually a verb. It's a doing word. Being sent, you know, sent out. But actually being sent is not totally what we do. It's who we are. It's in our identity in him. What he did... And who he is, is innately in us now. And that means we can't help ourselves to be excited about that transformation journey that he's bringing to us personally, but it's also to share with others. So I'm going to talk today quite a bit about a duality of different things. So what do we think being sent is? When I'm saying these words, what's going on in your head? Um, and do, you see, do we see ourselves as sent people? Mike said it's actually show and tell time. He reminded us it's not just the job of the evangelist, it's every believer's job to mould the kingdom. What does that mean? Everyday life, everyday ways. Um, mirroring God, doing the work of God in this life and on this earth. We're, you know, we're working with his precious broken people. It can, take our it can take up our time, it can be messy, and it requires our obedience, sacrifice, submission, and faith, and courage. It's creatively building and serving his kingdom and it's serving God by serving others. So the gospel needs to be, a, a few, well, it's a lot of things, but it needs to be talked about, spoken about, but also actioned. It needs to be declared what it is and then we model it, um, articulated and embodied in who we are. We can't just be full of knowledge and words and saying the right things. It's about what we're doing. It's about what we're being. So what are people observing of us? He, uh, Mike talked about, do we live a questionable life? Now that's a word that we probably move into the negative, questionable, what's happening there. But on the other side of it, the positive side of that word is um, that others look at us and, and ask good questions about our life. So uh, someone might be thinking and watching you and looking at you, someone you have connection with at work or school somewhere, and they, someone might be thinking, what are they doing? going to church every Sunday. What is that? Why are they doing that? Why are they giving their time and money to that church? Who are they? Like, what do they believe? Whose are they? Why are they still doing this year after year? Who's this Jesus they follow? What is all this talk about relationship with Jesus rather than religion? Faith, faith, what's that? What's the faith journey? These are some questions that people may be asking about you, but maybe not willing to you know, ask you. So what are we modelling? What are we um, bringing to that? What, what are people actually asking those things about you? Hmm, bit of a challenge, eh? So, and the things we do, yeah, are people seeing Jesus in us and through us? Are people feeling Jesus through us? Are people getting to know Jesus through us? And he talked about, are we showing generosity, justice, service, hospitality, self-control? So in the next scripture, he talked about Galatians. We all know that, the fruit of the Spirit. So do we all know them? We go, read them out. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Right, against such things is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So this is, this is the bit I'm focusing on. Since we live in the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Hmm, what, is, what does that mean? How do we do that? Today I want to share a message to encourage and equip you to be able to do this. 
So the next slide. Um, fostering the missional habit of listening for the Spirit's voice. So we're just going to spend a few minutes on why and then a few minutes on how. So I hope you'll be encouraged by this. So I'm just going to give you a wee reminder, a little teacher thing coming out of mine, the next one. Um, Connect Church New Zealand, about us gathering together and why we're here. So our vision is to see our communities and beyond transformed one life at a time with the hope and love of Jesus Christ. How we, our mission is to help lost people get found and found people grow. And we need to be able to do this with our values, which are authenticity, family, reconciliation, generosity and honour. So, how do we be God-centred, Christ-like, hospitable, and mission-focused? It's been cool this morning. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming at you with all this stuff. <laughs> it's like, whew, okay, what, <laughs> what do we do that? But we can do that um, by being spirit-led. And so a little bit more on that later. Um, so don't. I'm going to wrap this all in. God's got it in hand, and we just need to tap into it. So be encouraged. So I just wanted to talk about the word missionary, like being sent. Some people will have thought, I asked you before, what are you thinking about when I say the word sent? Some people go, oh, that means that's a missionary. You know, God might call them to go to Africa or Honduras or China or South Auckland or something. You know, I'm just going, <laughs> <laughs> bluff, I don't know. You know, I'm just saying there, there might be places that God might call people to actually go and be a missionary. And I'm thinking, what is actually that word? Um, so let's look at the Great Commission. I'm going to sit right in here. <laughs> All right, so can you read that? It's all right. Then the, this is um, after he'd been with them a number of days, um, after he'd raised, he walked with them for the number of days, and then this is at the point where he's leaving to go back to heaven and with God. And he said, The eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some did still doubt. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the end of the age. Woo! It's quite a lot, isn't it? So I looked up mission. What is mission? And the word is it's a very important task that's assigned to us often to represent someone or something. Hmm, sounds a lot like being a Christian, doesn't it? Showing and telling people about Jesus. As a missionary of Christ, we're the ones who've been assigned to this important task, and we need to activate it. And for each one of us, it'll be different. Are we open to different? Not just in a different reflection, you will be able to talk to someone differently than I will, or God might ask you to do something different than me. Um, Paul Peter, he got asked to step out of the boat, and that was building up his faith in Jesus, um, being a witness. But for someone else, it might just be talking with someone person to person rather than a text. So remember, being saved into God's kingdom here on earth and heaven is twofold. It is we're safe for ourselves, you know, for our eternity with God, but we're also safe for family and community. We can't be so closed off to our own little community that we're not connected to people that don't know Jesus yet, the lost. It's where we once were. Do we, do we remember how lost and how broken and how in the dark we were before we came to know Jesus? Good. This, that undergirds our desire, our um, urgency to actually bring others, that freedom out of that into knowing Jesus. But it is also a balance of being, you know, we, we want to sit in the, in the middle of this. One extreme is that we could be so Christian, so spiritual that we end up being exclusive, you know? Um, we can be a bit judgmental. That's putting law before grace, pious, staying in our churches or our groups. Apart from perhaps our workplaces, you know, are, are we actually making contact with non-Christians at all? So um, that's kind of sitting way down on that extreme. And then the other extreme is perhaps at times we think, oh, I've got a mission. I can go into, you know, the pub or that party and I'll, I'll be fine. And we could be fine. But then some people are going to the further extreme and actually go... I can, um, <laughs> I can, um, I can just do everything they're doing, and um, and it makes no difference. You know, you would actually know different than what they are and what they're doing. So that's way down that extreme. So we want to be sort of sitting in the middle here, somewhere. We want to be in the world, but not of the world. We want to be full of grace, but God does say we need to love God and love our neighbour. So how do we do that? 
can't be sort of way down here at that extreme and way down here at this extreme. And there's good news because God's got it. God's got it. He's, he's given us tools and equipping to be able to do all this. So what do we have that's different from others that don't have Jesus? I'm happy for some answers if anyone thinks about that. <laughs> I'd like to think about that again. What do we have that's different from others that don't have Jesus? Hope. Sorry? Hope. Hope. Great. Anyone else? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yeah. All right. That's good. <laughs> Forgiveness of sins. Yeah, we do have quite a lot. So we are walking around full up, equipped, full of, um, full of God's empowerment and his hope and his grace and forgiveness. And he actually has given us the Holy Spirit. That actually gives us his resurrection power to care for others, to know where to go, what to say, what to do. Um... God knows. We don't always know. And actually, more importantly, he knows the person that he's perhaps asking you to talk to or pray for or share with. He knows them best. And so we have to have his wisdom and his heart and his knowledge um, and his all-encompassing um, love for that person to be able to minister to that person in the way they need, not necessarily how we think they need. So, you know, is it... A, a hug or a meal, cleaning the house, money for a counsellor, firewood stacked, taking the children out, what is the best thing? All of those things are good, and we should be encouraged to do those. But actually, what's going to minister that person deep down that's actually going to break through all their walls or their hurt and actually minister deep into their love tank and reveal the Father heart of God for them? So how do we do that? Well, the Holy Spirit's going to help us, isn't he? Sometimes we know, we go, oh, maybe I need to come away from this conversation and go and pray. So God, how best is it to pray for that person? Um, so we need to navigate our way on this earth. So God gives us help. He's our companion. Holy Spirit is our companion. The Holy Spirit is our source of strength and is our indispensable source of wisdom. And we need to develop hearing God to create opportunities to hear the promptings of his spirit. So did we hear the news weekend, this weekend? We heard about the government, what's going on there, the radio, the TV, social media, work colleagues, friends, lots going on. Somehow and amongst all that, the enemy is often speaking to us as well. Speaking in fear and almost apathy. Don't worry about it, it'll be fine, someone else will do it, they'll, they'll get sorted, it's God's business to save, I don't need to be involved. You know, we can be quite busy in thinking of how we are to do life. I just had a bit of a thought about, you know, we're listening to lots of voices. Is our ear space filling our brains with lots of info? So there's, there's a little bit of a difference between listening and hearing. Listening is to pay attention to sound, to listen to music, you know, having an awareness, being alert to catching something. It's just, it's kind of what we do just really naturally. It's an it's a, um, involuntary thing. But actually hearing is perceiving or becoming aware of someone or something. It's that next step, okay, I've got the sound, what, what is that? How am I processing it? How's my brain processing it? What's, what's coming in? And often our brain will quickly turn and will help us to gain knowledge or to hear something that needs thoughtful attention, to give consideration, to heed, to have the capacity of perceiving or becoming aware of something, to, to learn. So are we hearing? So can I have the first audio? This is often our day. Can be quiet. <laughs> All right, we'll do something practical. You can have 10 seconds, talk to the neighbour next to you. <laughs> no, that's that's great. That's this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what what my my point around that was is actually see it's a bit hard to hear over that. It's a bit hard to hear. So if you're trying to listen to what's being said by someone over here, the noise would just 
and, and noise all the time. And or sometimes we're trying to get a frequency on a radio station. I mean, the the car the cars today are pretty good. They'll just skip. Do you remember the old days? You had the dial and you used to turn it and turn it and turn it. Oh, there's a voice. There's something. Don't like that. On to the next one. <laughs> you know, the radio was going. You don't remember those days. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of um, what what we're trying to do is is it, my idea with that is that's like our life the turning of the radio you know, the dial it's kind of going you know shush, 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 shush. hello 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 shush, shush, shush. the weather's good today shush, shush. you know and all those things and that's what we actually need to hear God's voice that's you know we're in the busyness and the static yeah. and busyness yeah. of life. We cl- oh, there's, there's someone talking, there's something we need to listen to. So that's what we're talking about today, is actually trying to get that frequency into God's station. Yeah. yeah, we need to get that. So it's listening to his voice. It's getting rid of distractions, fostering that discipline of going, getting out of the shh, 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 busyness and actually hearing, hearing God's voice. So our practice of generosity and hospitality must be intentionally nurtured to sustain the discipline of having a place to be able to hear that voice. So that's solitude, silence and prayer. Time with God will provide us the substance for this other-oriented outlook, one that intentionally encourages and enhances connection and relationship. We need to listen to the voice of God because he'll shape us and fill our hearts with the love for those that he sends us to, that need us. If we don't spend time with God away from the busyness of the world, aren't we no different from our frantic harried, busy, stressed neighbours. So what did we hear from God this week? And how did we hear from God this week? For everyone, it'll be different. So it's just a couple of um, practical recommendations, just ideas for you to take away this week and see what you might like to do. Some of you will have some intentional time with God sort of already. Some are new on that journey. Um, some really connect with God at the clothesline or um, with worship. But... I'm just encouraging you to set aside a designated time, maybe just even once a week, just for about 20 minutes. Um, you know, it's got a priority to us. Book it in, you know, when there's just going to be no distractions. Um, Matthew 6.6, 6. I hope we got that scripture, great. So it encourages us, this is Jesus saying to um, the people, when you pray, go to your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father, who sees what's done in secret, will reward you. Now that might not be a PlayStation or a car. It's talking about rewarding you and your spirit, rewarding you, <laughs> rewarding you and your, um, you know, just in your everyday life. And, and he'll reward you with giving you gifts and, and um, strength and courage to move forward. I thought of eliminating distraction. So that's everything. All your senses, kind of, uh, your touch, sight, sound, smell, and taste, like anything that. I don't know, can you spend time with God for 20 minutes when the roast is wafting through the house or, you know, the lawnmower's going or there's music in the background? Some people might be able to, but a lot of us can't. It sets us off when the mower's going or the tick, tick, tick of the clock, trying to find a really quiet place. Recommended to have a notebook or a pen. I'm going to talk about how different people think differently, but um, to write down random thoughts so they won't keep coming back because as soon as you write it down, your brain doesn't have to think all the time. Um, to keep remembering it, so writing it down is really good. It's kind of not really the time to read other books that have, um, have people have been inspired to write a book about what revelation they got from God. This is a time for you to hear from God for yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah just that doesn't mean you can't read those books just for this particular time. Um, just it's you and Him. And it's also not the time to give God a list of all the things that we think we need. <laughs> it's a time to sit, close your eyes, and commune with God. So who would find this easy? Who would find this quite hard? It's great. Yeah, it's a challenge. Um, So here's a bit of a story, a little bit of a story. Um, There's a next graphic with the two heads. Is that there? Yes. (sighs) Just (laughs) breathe. All right, so getting a bit personal here. So um, there's two, two brains there. One is just empty, just not, hasn't got a lot in it at the present time, and this one is a busy one. So I'm going to put it out there. Steve's very lucky. He's got times where his brain can be empty. 
<laughs> that doesn't mean he's not an intelligent man. That doesn't mean he doesn't have great thoughts. That doesn't mean that, you know, he's got things in his head. Um, you know, he does. But there's definitely times where he can say that he doesn't think of anything. Like, he might go for a walk for an hour and come back and go, oh, what did you think about? What a God, you know, what's going on? Did you make a decision about that thing? He said, I didn't think about anything. <laughs> Okay, I, <laughs> that just is so the complete opposite for me. It, like, I don't think I've got a time where I don't have thoughts in my head. And so we've each both got challenges with that. There's times where it is good to not have a lot of distraction going on. But there's also a time where I need to not have so many things in my brain that I can have actually fit God in. That I can actually just give him space. So... He's got different brains that often in his spouses, different ones in families, just different brain, different way we've all made up. God has made us different. So we need to, some people will struggle um, to fit, put God in and some people will struggle to fit him in. So we just need to bring in some spiritual discipline around this and just be intentional about what God is actually asking us to do. Um, so it's about focusing. So the next graphic, focusing. So we are on a God-centered transformative journey and we need to learn to renew our mind, which may also mean renewing our habits, our practices, our rhythms to make way for our focus to become more and more like Christ. It's a balance of both. Just like any skill we have to practice, we have to learn. Some people are into cooking, some people are into something to learn about sport. You know, we learn it, we're learning something at school or a new skill at work, we intentionally spend time around that. We often train for it. But this is kind of, a, sometimes can be a bit ad hoc. So today we're talking about focusing in. So focus in on being with him, giving him our full attention, listening for his voice, learning what his vo voice sounds like, focus on what he's saying, on what he needs us to hear, and what it is that he's saying to us. So with that, just a reminder that enemy will try and get in and distract you. He doesn't want you spending time with God and hearing from God because that could bless others. So he's out to get in and to get you off track, get you distracted. Um, just ask the Holy Spirit to, to grant you knowledge, wisdom, courage, or whatever you need. Ask him to help you to focus and centre. Um, it's no questions, no talking. He already knows everything you need. Just sitting, enjoying his presence. Sitting quietly, asking the Holy Spirit to fully encompass you. It becomes a place of shelter, a sanctuary, abiding in his presence and letting his love wash over you. What will happen is that we slowly centre on him. Every picture in your mind's eye will become Jesus and it will calm you. Edginess will settle, random thoughts will subside. This is not Eastern meditation where you empty your mind completely of everything. It's Christian contemplation of not engaging with distracting thoughts that come to your mind. Your thoughts slow down to become captive to God, become more shaped by the Holy Spirit. You learn to recognise his thoughts, which will come to you a source of peace, comfort and a source of answers. Listening to God is the highest form of prayer. With that, then will come following his promptings. Mm, he might tell you things you don't want to hear or you're not ready for, but we trust in God, right? So I love the story in um, Elijah. So we'll just go to the 1 Kings. And the Lord said, go and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. So Elijah had just done this great, fantastic mission, dealt to all the prophets of Baal. However, the king was after him, and he got a bit scared, and he took off. And he hid in a cave, and God's calling him out now. Go and stand on that mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Who wouldn't want to be in the presence of God, eh? Then a great and powerful wind tore through the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. Hmm, a little scary. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but he was not there either. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood in the mouth of the cave because he knew God was there. And a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And then he says, Now go. 
and God gave him his mission. He told him to go back and anoint two kings, call a prophet to succeed him, and then told him what would happen for God's people for the next amount of time. So the Holy Spirit may bring to mind to you your fate, name of the face of someone he might try you might. Someone you perhaps need to forgive, someone you need to re-engage with, someone that needs something, that needs blessing. And so you trust that, and then you go and do that. And how do you go and do that? With the power of the Spirit. So Romans 8, 5. There are those who are living according to the things which glorify the body, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the will and the purpose of the Spirit. It's important to be good stewards of our bodies, but our focus needs to be more on the things of the Spirit, things of eternal value. We need to be governed by the Spirit's leading to ensure we set a godly example, and we're able to lead these questionable lives. So being sent, it's not just replicating what he has done, it's us being who he needs us to be. So as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And he promises that he'll be with us while he does that. There's a comfort and a help with that. So the graphic, if we put the graphic up, we spent, the teaching team spent quite a bit of time on this graphic and um, there's a, a young man and he's got a backpack on which should indicate pre preparedness, that there's something in that backpack he's packed and he's ready to go and he's going out the door. Now we can't see where he's going. It's not maybe China or Bhutan, it might just be you know, out to visit his neighbours, but the light's there, and God's there, and he's with them, and this guy's having faith, and he's, he's going to move out. So that's the visual that we want you to have, that even though he doesn't know where he's going, he can't really see, he's intentional, and he's going. So God does not leave us alone and unequipped for mission. He gives us each other. And in the Great Commission, he said, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He's not expecting you to do this by yourself. And also, at the end of that first scripture in John, when, God, when Jesus was saying, peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And then it finishes and says, and with that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So the Father sends the Son into the world filled with the Spirit, and the Son sends us into the world empowered by the Spirit. So how can you be filled and empowered by the Spirit? So I'm going to do a wee exercise. I know we're just finishing up here. So I just want you to close your eyes for a moment. It's free will choice, you don't have to, but if you'd like to engage, just take a couple of minutes and I want you to close your eyes and still yourselves. Just relax. Forget who is next to you and what's going on around you. I want you to take a deep breath in. And now breathe out. Now let Jesus just breathe on you. Receive his breath. His spirit his presence, his power, his strength, his wisdom. Let his Holy Spirit presence settle on you and in you. Just soak in it. Be refreshed. Be filled. This is the quiet, settled place that you will hear his voice. This is what you can practice. We're now going to sing a song called Spirit of the Living God. And I want you to sing it with a different perspective. Not one that blesses us personally, but with a perspective that we desire God's voice and power to use us to bless others. It says, when you speak, your voice changes us and changes everything we see and everything we seek. We only want to hear his voice and see what he sees with his eyes. His heart, his wisdom. And when he moves, he moves us to tears. Why are we singing that? What, are the, what, are they, what do those words actually mean? He wants us to be moved for tears, not for ourselves, but for those who don't yet know Christ. And when he moves, he moves all our fears so that we can be bold and courageous to do what it is that he's asking us to bless others. And when you fall, we fall on our knees. When your spirit moves in power, we are humbled by your power and presence. And when you fall, we fall at your feet. We worship you as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who knows us best and empowers us to do your will and mission with your love.
Lord, we thank you for the life that you sent Jesus to live and the spirit you've sent to indwell us. Lord God, that we can become more like you. Lord, the promise that when you left the distressed disciples that you had to go, but only so the Spirit could come, that could be with all of us all of the time, that you would empower us to be your witnesses in our hometowns, in the wider district, and in all of the earth. Oh, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, which gives us as people access to the very depths of God. May we nurture your presence in our life with the due respect, with the due priority, that we might live faithful lives, that we might construct for ourselves a race in our minds, or we will put the finish line in the right place to receive that well done, good and faithful servant, that we would be not those who are too busy to listen, not too busy building our lives to make time for the one who is the builder of our lives. May we be those who hunger and thirst for the living water of your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I love a message like that. It's like sit there and go like, Amen. And now I go, oh, oh. We have to make sure we probably align our lives to it now. Kind of can agree with it in theory. But, um, you know, I think often these days, sometimes especially in a church like ours where it's not steeped in tradition and sacrament and we love altar calls where we hope that we can say a prayer and everything's going to change but we talk all about having a new life in Christ that's what Easter's about but so many of us don't want a new lifestyle to go with our new life but if we're going to be apprentices disciples of Jesus we need to learn how to use the tools that he is teaching us to use the tools that he's putting in our hands so we can become proficient in the life that he's calling us to live. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor H. Just a great reminder for us all. Hey, a couple of things uh, that we need to know before we go out. We have, for those of you who are looking forward to one of our future practices in the coming weeks of uh, knowing our word, we've got great news. We've got a First Testament in tes- uh, intensive with Pastor Ray Moxham. He's doing the wisdom and prophetic books. Um, I think he came and talked about Covenant and Abraham and Genesis uh, for the first half of that two-day intensive. He's coming back for another two-day intensive, the 13th and 14th of May. It's a Friday and Saturday. It's $75. Come and see Pastor Dawn if you're interested, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And can I encourage you, um, not everyone who talks about the Bible is equal. It's great to have scholars, people who have made their lives studying these documents speak the uh, languages that they were written in. Uh, Pastor Ray, the First Testament lecturer at um, Alpha Crucis, speaks Hebrew, reads Hebrew, actually gets the kind of language nuance of these books and understands the genres and all of that stuff. So, so helpful. Uh, Anyone who watches uh, property programs, like I like to, they say the thing with real estate, location, 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 the thing with Bible, context, context, context. You need to know how it's written, who it's written to, what it's written for. And when we understand that, we can then work out what faithful looks like, which is absolutely our heart. So I really encourage you to connect with Pastor Dawn. For those of you who don't know, she's in the second row here, and um, she would love to talk to you about that. Hey, uh, we have got, hopefully you guys are part of a connect group somewhere outside of these gatherings, that you're part of a small group having conversations about what it means to be sent. That's what we're doing at the moment as a church. We really believe this is a journey that we need to go on as we come out of this COVID season where we're perhaps our worlds have got a bit smaller and remember who God's called us to be and the empowerment that he's given us to do it. Engine room tomorrow. Those of you who love to pray, which is all of us. I know you're all like, that's all of us, Mike. We love to pray. Uh, tomorrow, 7 p.m., there is a link uh, that will be posted on our Facebook um, tomorrow that you can zoom in so for those who are sick or whatever or perhaps you're feeling under the weather or if you've just been hit by the fact that the days are very short now and it feels like it's 6.30 and you, you're sure it's 11 I don't know if you guys are finding that I'm finding that uh, like wow is it really only 7 o'clock at night 
um, then you can stay in the comfort of your own home and zoom in and pray with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Last but not least, hopefully if you are a mum, spiritual or in the natural, that you got one of these. Uh, when you came, just a little gift to you from us. And there is going to be the uh, Ben the Ben Dalloway. Ben Dalloway at the back uh, with the camera. And he is going to be out if you shoot out these doors uh, and then through uh, the uh, reception space and then out to the front of the building and turn left. He'll be up by the 